Hello, and welcome to Horror Rewind. This is Kelly Florence. And I'm Meg Hoftal. And this week we're talking about demons. The Dario Argento movie. Meg, have you ever seen this movie? No, this was my first time seeing it. Actually, so this is my confession. I've never seen a Dario Argento movie. I'm sorry. Kelly's face right now. No, it's fine. It, was this your first time seeing it? No. Okay. I no. I had this on VHS. I owned it. Oh, okay. This this is an interesting development. Okay. And I have I haven't talked to you about it because I was like, oh, we have to do it on horror rewind, and I don't want to know what you think about it ahead of time, because this is like this was like my gateway into Italian gothic horror. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I literally existed in a world that I did not know this existed. I, I, I was just bopping along and not knowing demons was a thing. Interesting. Well, okay, so how are you, first of all, before we get into all this? How are you? It's, your kids were on spring break last week and so were mine. Yay. <laughs> no, I love my kids. No, I'm, yeah, good. I'm so good. Yeah, I'm good too. I... I think spring break is hard, though, because especially if you have to work, like we both do, like you're writing at home during the day, and I, well, I wasn't on spring break at the same time. I had to go and teach, so it's not like you can go on a trip that week, or, you know, maybe you could. I don't know, but it's 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 difficult. Yeah, my husband was working, so we didn't do anything fun, and I can't complain because my job's pretty flexible. Um, you know, as my kids are getting older, it's kind of nice sometimes when you feel like you have a day where you could actually do something because life gets so busy sometimes like I'm running them to taekwondo and school and we're doing homework and stuff so actually as I get older I'm starting to actually appreciate the breaks a little bit more that's good um well we have this movie demons to talk about first of all I want to talk about my experience with this I saw this movie like it was for sale somewhere and I got it cheap and I'm like I'll buy it it's a horror movie and it made me feel something like a scared feeling that not a lot of American horror movies made me feel. And I don't know if it's because it was it was like this Italian movie or if it was the soundtrack or just how it was shot. But it really creeped me out. And it stuck with me all these years. And even thinking about it now, I start getting a stomach ache of worry. I don't know why. It just makes me feel that way. Maybe because it's happening in a movie theater and like that's somewhere you like you spend time. <laughs> so it just seems like all too real. Uh, OK, I here's what I'm going to say. I feel like if if there are like elements of a horror movie, I feel like it was so good in like nine of ten elements and there's just one thing about like that just fell flat but otherwise oh my god the gore in this movie i loved it so much like i was so excited about the gore and the visuals and there's so many great things but there's just one thing that was just like this hanging chat tell me tell me tell me what's the hanging chat there were no characters that i cared about i just like and then to compare it to um, some of the movies that we watch for the episodes we're going to be doing later, I was like, okay, that's the difference of like my emotional investment because it was so visually beautiful. The gore was so amazing. There's some funny parts in it, um, but there was just no, oh, and the ending, oh my goodness, but there was just no character that I was like cared if they lived or died. And, and that's, I think that was just the thing that kind of fell flat for me. No, I, I get that. I guess I immediately glommed on to this girl. Um, and I, even though, the yeah, there, there's not much character development or any about any of these people, but I just connected with her. So then I immediately feel like that's me and I'm in this situation. And I wrote down, this is how they would lure me to my death, a free movie showing. Because, <laughs> yeah, I think maybe that is it. Like, I would totally go to this. And if I was trapped in a movie theater, like, that's a, I don't know, like, there's no way out. That was terrifying. I, the, it's so great. And I talk about, I talk about this all the time because I love strangers trapped places. It's like my favorite. And the fact that it was in the theater was great. The, oh my God. Okay. So, he, so as I'm watching it, I'm like, what is this? I don't know what this is. Like the first 15 minutes, I'll be, I'll be honest. I was kind of like, I don't know what 
this is. I don't, I don't care. And then as soon as that woman went into the bathroom and she had the big zit thing on her face and exploded and you know, we love a good pimple popping. (laughs) Um, I was like, okay, now I'm interested now. Now you've got me. And then afterward when she's like becoming a demon and she's behind the video screen or was that her behind the video screen or is that another girl oh okay well anyway um it's it started to ramp up real quick the the i would tell somebody if you haven't seen it like the first 15 minutes are boring but then the the pimple oh my god so i wrote down um this scenario and just like you i love strangers trapped or in a situation but this scenario justifies a diverse group of people together in the same place at the same time and all of a sudden you're put into this situation and you see what happens i love that um (laughs) this blind guy i thought it was his wife at first but it's his daughter thank god liz is like making out with her boyfriend like like near her blind father and she's not answering that was so gross there were some elements that made me like feel like twin peaks feelings like and that blind guy and his daughter i don't know there was just some elements of that that made me feel like i don't know that david lynch was involved i I, so there's this mirroring going on. There's the movie within the movie that they're watching on the screen, and they find a mask, and the one person puts it on and scratches their face just like the woman does, and it's so, like, eerie feeling. And then you, fe- then you're watching this movie, the them watching a movie in a movie, and I just, it's like, what if this happens to me? I don't know. And the, even there were sounds in the movie that were sort of interplaying with real like moans and screams and stuff and she's like wait I think that's somebody and he's like it's just the movie baby there's always that guy um and yeah that it's definitely meta um there's a couple of lines that are really great too it's they will make cemeteries of their cathedrals and tombs there no they will make cemeteries their cathedrals and tombs their cities and I thought that was really like gothic and wonderful and then it's not the movie, it's the theater. Fuck! <laughs> when she, speaking of pimple popping, I think she needed stitches after that. That one, you need to go, don't pop a pimple like that at home, people. If you have a demon pimple, like, please go to the hospital. Did you notice how many horror movie haters there were in the audience? They're all like, oh no, it's a horror movie. Um, but also this scenario, it would be hard to believe that it was really happening because... You know, if stuff starts happening around you, you're like, oh, they're just promoting the movie. But what if something like at our Walker Stalker convention, if there was really a zombie outbreak, no one would believe it. Yeah, we've talked about it before, like when we were sitting at Walker Stalker, we're like, what if that person is not cosplaying? We would just they would come like bite our arm and we wouldn't even know. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, fe- I don't know how I would react. Like, I felt like there people were being really calm at first, like when um, she ripped through the screen and stuff. And I was like, I feel like I would be like trucking it out of there. But maybe I would just be like, this is performance art. I don't know. It, it all happens really fast then after that point, because it just there's nothing else to do. Uh, the practical effects of oozing and popping um, and just all the blood and gore and like having to fight these demons. It's so gross, but it's really well done. Um, and then someone's like, oh, you've got blood all over you. And they're like, it's not my blood. Like, that's such a great line in every horror movie. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we've heard that before. But yeah, it's it's such a good one. And yeah, if you're a gore hound, um, this movie, I, that was my favorite part about this movie. And I know there are people out there that don't like gore, but I personally thought it was just next level amazing and the use of color in this movie reds and blues like a lot of the primary colors um and i know that dario argento is kind of known for those kinds of things um absolutely stunning just you know i mean it's very 80s obviously but the visuals i just loved it and yeah and, and the blood it had that dawn of the dead um like bright neon red blood um, the I can't remember his character name, but the black guy, he's the only one worth a damn because he's, like, taking charge and, like, ordering people around and trying to solve the problem. But then he gets attacked. Yeah, he was the only one that I was just like, okay, I, I'm invested in him. I, I care a little bit. I mean, you know, maybe he plays off a little, like, cliche or something like that, but I thought he was cool. Um, okay, I have a question. I, I, as I was watching this movie, I was confused because... Obviously, it's dubbed, but it looks like they're speaking English, and I don't understand 
why it didn't look like they were speaking Italian. So sometimes the the actors are speaking English because I I looked this up when I saw Suspiria in the fall that sometimes some of the actors are speaking English but they still dub them or something you know so like different actors were speaking different languages like while filming the movie. That's weird because I was like it's dubbed but it's matching like what they're saying. Okay, okay. I I love the retro and punk feel of you know the setup of the movie and the people all seem maybe it's just because it's the 80s but they just seem like regular looking people like there's no movie stars <laughs> there's one guy i said the coke head guy i don't know but he looks like a cross between sylvester stallone and brendan Fraser. <laughs> <laughs> and I laughed out loud because they were literally sniffing Coke out of Coke cans. Oh, yeah. And I thought, I didn't know if it was like a visual joke, like it was pop that they were putting up their nose, but then it really was cocaine. And they were putting it in their pop can. But I just have to say, side note, I think that would be a terrible idea. Because if you put cocaine in a Coke can, it'd be, it would get wet. You guys, don't do that. Also, don't do cocaine. <laughs> right. Okay, so my, I'm, I might be skipping ahead, but I'm coming to my favorite scene and the scene that stuck with me and to this day my favorite scene is when they're crawling through the vent and they hear they think they hear the creature behind them or in front of them and then behind them but it's because she's turning into a demon yes oh my god there's so many good oh my god yeah that's a good that's a good anytime you're there's a vent scene in a horror movie i mean those are always fun when they're like in a crawl space or whatever and she doesn't even realize that it's her that's changing. And, and that's the thing, too. Like we always say about zombies and werewolves and everything. If someone you love becomes a demon, it's like, just kill me because I can't fight you. I mean, and I think that's, that's like at the heart of all good horror movies is that idea of like not being able to trust yourself or the people around you. I feel like that's always the scariest thing is when, you know, it's not that, that you can become the creature. I think that's why zombies and vampires and werewolves and all that are popular because that's scarier than anything is what if you're becoming the demon and you don't even know it? I love it. Okay, so these idiots, they make this great barricade and then they think they're being rescued. So they tear the barricade down and the demons get through. But I did notice something. And did you notice this? The demons seem to be having a good time. They were party demons. Yeah. That's a good point. They were happy about being demons. They liked they liked eating people. Yeah, I mean, they were not depressed emo, like, sort of demons. Yeah, they didn't look tortured or, like, zombies sometimes seem in pain. And, like, like the ones in Return of the Living Dead, which I won't get into, but they're, like, in pain because they need brains. But these demons are having a great time. <laughs> yeah, that is nice. You know, it's nice to see happiness. Okay, I don't even remember what this is referencing but i said why did kathy get the demon baby out of her back <laughs> oh okay because because when when <laughs> when i thought it was a guy who turned into it no maybe it was a girl when she turned into a demon that demon baby came out of her back or like the demon it, it like came like she was like hunched over and then in, it was it was pretty wacky it was pretty wacky but but i mean i loved it I loved it too. Okay, and then um, skipping sort of towards the end, I feel like this end sequence is the ultimate male fantasy. He's on a motorcycle, he's got a sword, he's got a woman on the back of his motorcycle, and he's slaying demons, and there's a helicopter. Like, doesn't it seem like really like male fantasy? It does. Like, phallic symbols abound. But so I have said a million times, like, in Dawn of the Dead, when the helicopter chopped off the, the top of the zombie's head, like, it was always, like, really traumatic to me. And, like, from that day forward, I just didn't like helicopters or, like, thinking about the blades. This one was just, this one was way gorier and more intense when the helicopter came through. And it was, like, it got way more zo um, demon guys. And I was, like, oh, my gosh. And I, that would have stuck in my memory even more. They're able to climb out she this main character and the guy and it ends up having a spoiler alert a happy ending because this badass kick-ass family picks them up and gives them weapons they're like there's the weapons and they're ready to go out and fight demons now and it's like perfectly set up for a sequel but it's not a happy ending though because of the very end after the thing did you stay kelly after the first part of the credits Kelly, I don't remember. The main girl dies. No, I didn't see this. Was this on Shutter? Yes. It, but you, it was after. 
it was after you're, you're saying it was happy and then I, and I'm sitting here like uh I'm sorry but what happens is they look over and she's a demon and they shoot her and she comes tumbling out of the back of the truck and it ends with her laying there dead if you guys can see Kelly's face right now we have to watch it right now so you can see that I'm gonna you talk I'm gonna bring it up on shutter how can I even talk now that she's dead um, <clears throat> wow I mean the, this proves the kind of movie goer I used to be when the movie was over I would stop it and rewind it I don't think so I mean I don't remember it well demons so demons came out in 1985 it's directed by Lamberto Bava and produced by Dario Argento. They did the filming in Berlin and Rome. They had a budget of $1.8 million. They, there are seven Demon sequels. Demons 2 came out in 1986 already. Also, do you remember when we talked about Black Sunday? Mario Bava directed that. Uh, the, this is his son who directed this, so it runs in the family. Okay, everyone, so I'm showing Kelly the credits are rolling right now, and they're showing her on the back of the truck with the guy, and Kelly didn't hasn't stayed long enough to actually see the real ending, and that was actually one of my favorite parts. We're watching. They're standing on the truck. What are you thinking right now, Kelly? This can't possibly end badly. Oh, no, what's happening? She's touching her... No. She's touching her neck. What? Oh, my God. Meg. You guys, Kelly loves this movie, and she didn't realize the ending. She's looking at a demon laying on the road that was the main girl of the whole movie, and she didn't know. So that's how... That's how it ends. This is how you kill my dreams, <laughs> Meg. <laughs> what if I just, like, what if every movie that you loved had an ending like that and you just always stopped? <laughs> and I've always just blocked it out? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> my God. Well, I mean, I still love it. it that's, that's probably better than a happy ending. Um, there's, this movie is only 55% on Rotten Tomatoes, but there's only nine reviews, so I feel like whatever. Leonard Maltin hated it, but doesn't he always hate horror movies? Um, it's listed on Bravo's 100 scariest movies of all time, so I don't know. What do you think? What do, what do you think? What would you rate this movie? Wait. Are we right? Are we I don't know. Are we at that point? What sort of horror movies then, now that you've just lived through that ending that you didn't know was there, um, what sort of horror movies have endings like that? I'm trying to think of other ones that have that bleak like thing at the end. I mean, Night of the Living Dead, I guess. Yeah. And that always broke my freaking heart. Yeah. I feel like a lot of times when I'd watch Night of the Living Dead, I would stop it before the end, too. Maybe I did know, Meg. Maybe I did know. Maybe you did. Maybe, like, you saw it as a kid, and then, like, when the credits came on, as soon as they came on. Because the credits, they're still on the truck. The credits are rolling. So I didn't stop it. So I think deep down, little Kid Kelly turned that off for you. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I mean, I feel like there's no there's no real happy endings in horror movies. You know? I mean, The Shining, is that a happy ending? No, not really. I mean, I know in the book they, like, tried to have a little bit happier ending, or Stephen King did. But, um, I mean, I guess unless you argue that Jack Nicholson's sort of his depiction, maybe they were better off without him. I don't know. I'm trying to think of a horror movie with a happy ending. I know they exist, but like zombie movies, it's hard to have a happy ending because, I mean, the world has kind of gone to shit. So, I don't know. You guys, Kelly's sort of staring out the window, sort of pondering the existence of life. and Forlorn. Yeah. It, I just couldn't believe when you said it was a happy ending. I'm like, what? I, okay, I can't believe it. Also, I think the reason I connected with this main actress 
is because I used to wear outfits like that because I grew up in the 80s and I had like her shoes and I, I swear I had that shirt and that skirt. And like you said, you'd be lured into a movie theater for a free movie any old day. Heck yeah. And I'd jump on that guy's motorcycle. Did you think he was hot? I mean, for a 1980 Italian dubbed over film, sure. <laughs> All of a sudden you have standards. <laughs> I, I am a slut. <laughs> <sighs> well, I don't even know. I don't even know, Meg. Where, where do we go from here? I don't know. But I think we have to rank it on the the masks that scratch you or like popping pimples. I'm going to go with popping pimples. God, that was a good. What's that show? Dr. Pimple, Pimple Popper? Mm-hmm. That would be a good one on there because it went everywhere, girl. Yeah, that and it is the result of the mask. So, out of how many popping pimples do you give demons? So, I'm going to give it seven and a half demons because, I mean, p- pimples, because the gore was amazing. Um, but there, I found myself, there were a couple times, like in the beginning, where I got kind of bored. And there was just, I didn't have that same identificating, identificating, that's not a word, identification with uh, a character. I just, I felt sort of like they all were sort of random to me. Yeah, it, it definitely is random. I would give it a seven. Um, it, I haven't watched it since I was a teenager, probably. It still gave me that creepy feeling. And I still love my that favorite scene of mine. But now that I know she's dead, I'm so sad. I, I thought you were going to definitely give it a higher score than me. So clearly that ending, like, really gutted you. <sighs> no pun intended. I don't know. I mean, maybe she's gutted. No, she wasn't. She was just shot in the gut. You guys, she kind of looks really sad. Oh, my God. Like, you know that, like, old Yeller dies, right? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> the Titanic sinks at the end. I wish it had off after they have sex in the car. <laughs> I've been trying to, I want the boys to see that movie, but like, I, I, I'm i fine with them seeing everybody die, but I don't know what to do about the steamy car scene. Do you, what do you do? Do you just fast forward? No, you just say that they're kissing in there. Yeah, I don't know. And what about naked? She's naked. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with seeing a naked lady, but. I feel strange showing them a movie with a naked lady in it. You know, I think that's better than them finding something on their own with a naked lady to watch. Well, which I'm sure they will or already have. But yeah, I don't know. Somebody tweet me and tell me what to do. <laughs> Is there like a version where she's wearing a, a nightgown? I mean, if you recorded it off of TV, they would probably wouldn't show it. Well, that's true. That's true. I mean, then you'd have to watch the TV version. ABC. Yeah. Okay. That was just a side note, everyone. Sorry. Another, um, I didn't bring her up, but I was remembering in the movie theater, like the woman who's collecting the tickets and stuff, she has like this amazing long red hair. And at first I thought she was in on it, but then she's just as surprised as everyone when the demons attack. So what was up with her? I think that's another one of those like where I felt like almost David Lynchian where there's just like people around that seem insidious or like nefarious, but they aren't, but they look amazing and but weird at the same time. I don't know. Yeah, I agree. Hi, horror friends. Lisa here. And today I'd like to share with you a drink inspired by the movie Demons. I'm calling Damn Cheryl. You can probably guess this movie was way too scary for me. Thanks for the heads up, Kelly. So my inspiration for this drink came from my research. For this drink, you will need brandy, Jägermeister, a German liquor, as the movie is set in Berlin, limoncello, as part of the movie was filmed in Italy, Goya guava juice, as the building used for the exterior shots of the cinema is a nightclub called Goya, and club soda. Who doesn't want a soda when they're at the movie theater? We will just need our measuring topper from our shaker and a Collins glass full of ice. And let's get started. Go ahead and add one ounce of brandy, a half ounce of Jägermeister, a quarter ounce limoncello, two ounces Goya guava juice, three ounces club soda. Grab a straw and give it a nice, long, slow stir. The guava and the limoncello complement the Jaeger, 
and the soda neutralizes all of the flavors to provide you a complex cocktail that finishes subtly with the flavors of Jaeger, which I'm sure everyone in that movie theater could have used that night. Cheers, horror friends. It's time for our fast forward segment. Meg, what are you going to talk to us about this week? Okay, so I'm going to talk about two books. One I just finished, finally, and one I'm starting to read right now. So I just finished reading Sleeping Beauties by Stephen King and Owen King, and I had got it a while ago, but it's a 700-page book, so, you know. Um, I actually got through it fairly quickly once I started it, Um, and I was talking to a guy yesterday about it who was saying that he couldn't get through it. He got, like, 300 pages in, but at first when I started to... Well, I should say when I heard the concept of the book, which is that um, every woman in the world, um, once they fall asleep, they on this one particular day, once they fall asleep, they are cocooned like sort of like a moth. And I was concerned that then that meant the movie or I mean, the book was going to be all about um, guys. And I was like, "Ugh, I don't know. Is it just going to be all like male characters and stuff? But you guys, it's so feminist. It was such a feminist book. So um, there were so many elements in this book. And I I have to say that it's written by Owen King as well as Stephen King. But I, it felt like a Stephen King book. Like I, I really didn't notice anything that felt like someone else's voice. I mean, I'm sure it was there. I just, I, I'm maybe not smart enough to figure it out. But it definitely reads like a, a classic Stephen King. My only um, complaint about it is there's maybe a few too many characters where sometimes you're trying to remember who is who. But it is so feminist. Um, in fact, like one example would be there's this male character who he's disgusting. He rapes women. And there was an opportunity at, at which um, Stephen King could have blamed his his mother, but actually he depicts his mother as this very wonderful and that he grew up in a very loving home. And I felt like even in previous Stephen King books, he would have um, sort of used that, given that, because he kills his mom in the book. I mean, it's not really a, a spoiler because so many things happen. But also what ends up happening, um, and, and I won't give too much away if you want to read the book, but the women um, are existing sort of in another timeline altogether in a women only universe and they compare the women only universe and now the men only universe and it's just feminist abound so it was really it was fun and it's a good time and um i'm sure it'll be made into a movie someday but i really recommend the book it was it was really well done and there's just some really complicated interesting characters and the sheriff of this town is a woman and um i it was just really delightful and the book i started to read um you guys know that I'm a true crime um, nut job, and so I'm reading um, I'll Be Gone in the Night um, by Michelle McNamara, and um, she passed away a couple of years ago. Uh, Can you tell us about who she is and her story? Yeah, so she um, started a blog called True Crime Diary of several years ago, and what's so amazing about her is she has no like training in um investigation or anything like that and she basically devoted her life to uh, unsolved crimes and one one in particular um that she coined the term the gold, golden state killer who has still as yet to be found and um she is known because she was married to Patton oswald the actor Um, So she was known in Hollywood circles. But I just started reading the book, and I'm already in love with her. Like, it's, it's, it talks about her perspective of being sort of this girl who likes dark things. And I could not, could not empathize with her more. And the fact that she passed away at 46 is really, really sad. Um, So basically, this book is about how um, she's searching for the Golden State Killer, but it's also sort of from the viewpoint of other people because she wasn't able to finish the book. So it's kind of about her obsession. But I know when I come across people like that, women like that, who like dark things, um, I don't know, I always just feel an instant sympathy. I also noticed that... Well, you said she wasn't able to finish the book, but they finished it for her. And I noticed that there's a foreword by her husband, Pat Oswald, and also Gillian Flynn, right? Yeah. Um, 
Yes, that's the very first person you read is is Gillian Flynn, and um, she talks about how she fangirled Michelle McNamara um, before she passed away, and how um, she followed her blog and how she was just in love with the fact that she was this this suburban um, mom who loved dark things as much as she did and was drawn to it. And so I really recommend this book. Um, I know Patton Oswalt's been going around um, doing a lot of like um, bookstore um, visits and talks and things like that. I, I, I would love to go to one. How did Michelle McNamara pass away? So um, she, um, it was just an accident. It was like sort of a Heath Ledger situation where um, she just went to bed one night um, and she would stay up all night um, after her daughter went to bed. She had, I don't know how old her daughter was at the time, maybe five. She would stay up all night researching um, this particular killer. And so to help herself go to sleep, she would take like a Xanax or something and she had, you know, a glass of wine or something. And it just, and if you listen to interviews and stuff, Patton Oswalt's very honest about what it was like the morning he woke up and found that she was dead and it's it will just tear you apart but I so recommend that you guys get this book I've only started I'm I'm only like you know not even 25 percent in but um read it that's amazing I I love recommendations like that and it's something that you know you wouldn't necessarily even know about I mean I knew that his wife had passed away and it was tragic and everything but I had no idea that she had this whole life of her own sometimes we lump celebrity spouses just as that so-and-so's spouse exactly and there's this great chapter in in the book um and i won't say too much but it's basically about how she's at a hollywood premiere and she gets a phone call about something regarding um a break in the case and she's literally like slouching down behind like a pole and like celebrities are trying to talk to her and she's like on the phone like talking you know because this is what she cares about you know the other stuff is her husband's job and so and then she literally like left the party early and she's like you know people would think she's crazy but um yeah it just makes her so endearing that's awesome well thank you for recommending that book to us those books actually and i and i'm pleasantly surprised i mean i'm happy that Sleeping Beauties turned out well because I know you had your doubts and I was starting to get worried about what it would it be a world without women. But anyway, anything else you want to say, Meg? No, I just love all my Horror Rewind listeners and thanks to everybody um, who has, I've gotten so many nice messages about my novel, um, so many personal messages like through Facebook and, and on Twitter as well and people have left reviews and if you've read my book, um, it would mean the world to me if you could leave an Amazon review. So thank you so much everybody. And yes, I see this all the time because I follow writers uh, on Twitter and elsewhere and and Meg says it's true. They really do want reviews and they really do want your feedback. And if you love something, tell tell her what you love. Tell them what you loved because, you know, they want to know. It's sort of a solitary life otherwise. It is. And also, if you don't love something, it's okay to tell us too. I always say, like, I, would, I want you to leave an honest review. So, um, you know, obviously we prefer the good ones because we're human beings. But um, we like to hear any kind of feedback. And yeah, I mean, and sometimes, like you said, even in the editing process, it's like sometimes somebody can give you some feedback that makes you think of something you hadn't thought about. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's that's what makes you better at anything. So, yeah, no, I love to hear all kinds of feedback. And and also um, as a author starting out in this world, um, Amazon reviews are, are a huge boon um, to what I'm doing. So uh, thank you to everyone who already has left a review. It means a lot. So everyone, go out and read some books as well as watch some horror movies this week. And until then, we'll see you in the horror section. Bye.